Good morning, everyone. My name is Paul Manzi, and I am the marketing manager at resortsandlodges.com and Track Hospitality Software. Uh, today, we've got a great presentation in store for everybody with Doug Kennedy of the Kennedy Training Network. A couple of quick reminders before we start today's presentation off. Um, make sure to mute your phone if you're hearing any feedback. Uh, the webinar is being recorded and will be shared online within 24 hours of our broadcast. If we do have time at the end, we may try to take some questions. Um, and we will be sending out a brief Q&A after the webinar to get your feedback here. Uh, a little bit about us. As many of you know, resortsandlodges.com is one of the leading travel websites for independent properties and hospitality companies. Resorts and Lodges also offers digital marketing solutions, including PPC, SEO, website development, and some email marketing. And Track Hospitality Software, Track Pulse, and Track PM is our all-in-one guest communication cloud for hospitality properties. Uh, Doug Kennedy has been a regular contributor to the hotel and lodging industry's most prominent publications since 1996, and we are very excited to have him be able to share some more some of his more than two decades of industry experience with all of you. Uh, today's webinar will be focused on helping your agents defend higher rates, explain stay restrictions, and sell limited remaining inventory. So without further ado, I will throw it over to Doug Kennedy with how to sell high season rates and last available accommodations. All right. Well, thank you very much, Paul. And we are very grateful of all the efforts you do and resorts and lodges and track calls to promote this webinar series, which is private just for your clients. And it's wonderful to have over um, going on about 80 different locations here joining us today. So maybe the topic caught your eye because it is that time of year. Um, let me just say a couple of things. We're gonna be together for, oh, usually about 45 minutes, maybe a bit longer. Um, you may be watching me either on the webcam completely. So I do have, of course, the the images projected behind me. So you may want to expand, if your monitor is big enough, expand the webcam and you can watch me present and read the content behind me. Alternatively, if you're on a smaller device, a tablet or a smartphone, um, you can watch my screen share, both of which are, are happening right now. So perhaps the topic caught your eye because it is that time of year, summer is fast approaching and a lot of our clients on, on, on today are resorts and lodges, of course. But of course we have hotels which also seem to be busy in the summer, particularly those located in major cities where you have the tourists coming out. I was just in Boston, um, my most recent trip to Boston, and already things were uh, getting busy, going to the Boston Tea Party Museum and Bunker Hill Memorial, and of course the Freedom Trail, there was already a lot of tourists out for spring break. So even if you're a city hotel, you're probably realizing that. So what's happening right now is it's only April, but those callers are dreaming about their summer plans. Now, again, um, the things that we talk about here today do apply both to business travelers and leisure guests. But of course, being the time of year, we're going to have a big focus on the leisure guests today. So mom, dad, mom and dad, hey, maybe dad and dad or mom and mom. They're starting to think now and dream about summer vacations. So what's happening right now, probably most of you are seeing this happening. Um, that, oh, hold on, my one clicker is not clicking, so let me get this clicking ahead here. For most resorts now, summer is already starting to book up. So what's happened, of course, is we know that every year it's a seasonal uh, occurrence. Um, if you're a ski resort, you have the summer come to the mountains, people. If you're a beach resort, it's probably peak season, um, unless you're coming to us from the lucky folks in Hawaii or down here in Miami, where of course, you know, we're busy in February uh, at the beach and we're also busy in July at the beach, but certainly a peak time is coming up. Now, interestingly, not surprisingly, our revenue managers, he knew this in advance or she knew this in advance. So what's happening is they have set the rates accordingly. Now, over the years, revenue management has got increasingly sophisticated. They're becoming better and better at tracking demand. So they can pretty much anticipate when there's going to be pressure in the marketplace. So number one, the rates change to the top tier rates. Number two, they put in a lot of restrictions that then um, have things like minimum stays, close to arrivals, and um, various promotions and rates are cut out. So guess which department gets to explain all those wonderful processes 
and principles and that are executed by the revenue management today, that person, ladies and gentlemen, is you. Now, reservations has never been an easy job. When I worked in hotels as a frontline employee, um, we still had our challenges then. You know, resorts had higher rates on the weekends, and um, corporate hotels that I worked at had higher rates during the week and lower on the weekends. But everybody had those seasonal things. I worked in New York City. New Year's Eve was a big time. Whenever the UN, the United Nations was in session, rates were at their tops. Uh, at my resorts that I worked at here in Florida and also in my hometown, Kentucky, you know, July 4th, Memorial Day, Labor Day. So, but today it's more sophisticated than ever as a result of the data and all the revenue management analytics that are going on. And lucky you in reservations is to explain these rules to this caller right here. Has she called you? Have you talked to her yet today? She's probably on hold right now, waiting for you when this webinar is over. So you are the lucky ones that get to explain what's happening um, uh, to the callers on the phone, okay? So first step that I'm gonna cover a few different techniques, tactics, and approaches that you can use in various specific scenarios. Um, I also write a blog for, um, Track Pulse and Resorts and Lodges is going to be my subject of my blog that's coming out uh, for next month. Uh, if you do also visit our website, Kennedy Training Network, I have other articles on this. And of course, our KTN YouTube channel. But I'm going to cover a few of the essentials today that are relevant for this time of year. So first thing I want you all to do is to make sure that you have already convinced yourself that the rates that you're charging are worth it to the callers. We have to quote rates with confidence, okay? Now, I remember when I first started working in hotels and what it was like to quote those rates. Now, I worked at a Marriott in my hometown, Lexington, Kentucky. I had traveled mostly with my parents, mostly in a camper. And so, you know, if we did get a room, it was one of those hotel chains with a number in it. Um, you know, there was a reason they called it Super 8 and uh, Motel 6, because the Motel 6 charged $6 and the Super 8 was 8. Uh, but at the Marriott, the rate was $199 or $129 for our regular room. Now, for me, making minimum wage in the 1980s, that seemed like a lot of money. But, of course, to our guests, it's all about them and not you. Now, I know I'm imagining a lot of you on this call can relate to this. Has anyone ever quoted a rate and you are shocked that they say, okay, sure. You know, if you're in the vacation rental business, that five bedroom beach house or mountain chalet with the three balconies and the hot tub and the game room and the home theater and all for you for the week for $12,000. And they say, okay, MasterCard, Visa or Amex, I got all three. Um, so it's always a little bit of shock, but remember it is their money, not yours, okay? Also, and those larger accommodations hold more people. So if you have that five bedroom and you have three families and you have, let's say 10 people, you know, $1,000 per person for seven nights, hmm, not as much, right? So make sure that you've convinced yourself. Now, oftentimes the callers, has this woman called you? Has she been on the phone? They will tell you the rate is significantly higher than what has been experienced previously for dates with less demand, all right? So let me go ahead into character here. So she's on the phone and you quote your rate for the summer and she said, so how much does that break down to per night? And you say, okay, well actually the rate is 375 a night. 375 a night? I didn't wanna buy it, I just wanted to sleep there. What does that include? And then she says, well, you know, last time I was there, I paid 175. Okay, now you're gonna say, well, when was that? <laughs> oh, well, last time uh, when I came there, it was whatever date she's gonna give you. Let's say at the July 4th, she's calling for July 4th. It's 375. Last time I paid 175, when was it? Oh, it's when we came to the main coast in uh, January. <laughs> oh, okay. So, you know, or off season, uh, let's say shoulder season, mud season, as you call it in the mountain areas. Um, and now they're calling for July 4th or they're calling for the peak season. Now, our tendency 
is to explain it this way. Our first reaction is to explain that the previous stay was during a slower period of the year, and the current rates are in a busy periods of peak demand. All right, so that's what we're trying to explain because that is the truth because our revenue managers want to improve profits, right? But here's how it comes out when we say it that way. We say, oh, well, you know, why are the rates so much higher in the summer? Oh, the rates go up due to high occupancy. Or we say, oh, well, actually, this is a busier time of year, so the rates are higher, okay? Is that really what you want to say? Because they're gonna be like, oh yeah, you price gouge, right? You charge, yeah, well actually, sir, it's because we practice this thing called revenue management and it is to improve our REVHAR, which is revenue per available room, so we can increase our yield and have higher ROI for our owners. <laughs> Do you really wanna say that? I don't think so. But that's what we say. The rates go up due to high occupancy. Now that is absolutely true, okay? But I wanna share with you the other side we're gonna flip it. We're gonna look at the other way to explain this that is equally and 100% just as true, okay? What we're gonna say that's much better, a better approach is to explain that high season rate, that's actually the normal rate, that's the prevailing rate. That's the normal rate. So what happens is rather than raising rates when it's busy, what the hotels actually do is we lower rates when it's slow. Doesn't that sound much better? See, there's you explaining it, big smile on your face, okay? Just as true, isn't it? Do we not lower rates when it's slow? I'm sure if I have revenue managers on this call today, you will vouch for me that when you see a period coming up that is moderate to low demand, you are going to open up discounts, promotions. If it's slower than it's supposed to be, you're gonna take the floor out and you're gonna lower rates even further. We lower rates when it's slow, okay? So that's what we wanna say. Doesn't that sound better? When did you come last year? Oh, off season. Oh, okay. Well, during your last visit, it was a slower time of year and we we're able to offer lower rates or specials at that time. But during these days, our normal or our prevailing rates apply. Doesn't that sound better? Every bit is true, 100% accurate. But rather than telling them we raise the rates when it's busy, we say, oh, that's actually the prevailing rate. What we do is we lower the rates during shorter periods, okay? And then, and then go on right into this, say, by, by the way, are your days flexible? Because guess what? If they are, if they are, your revenue manager, she will love it if you get that caller to move to slower dates. She will love it if you sell a lower rate because that's when we need the business. I'm going to just take a guess here. You're selling out in July, second half of June, first half in August. But that first week in June, a little soft, right? Last week in August before Labor Day, a little soft. You move them to those dates, weather's still nice, everything's still open. It's after Memorial Day, it's before Labor Day. But those weeks, if your dates are flexible, you can save a lot of money. Okay, so if, 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 you, if your kids are already raised or you don't have kids or your kids are in preschool or kindergarten, okay, um, then you can actually move them and, and at least offer, would you like me to help you find lower rates for other dates? And maybe there's other holes in your summer schedule, okay? And, and chances are, though, most people say, no, I can't, I can't. I got a baby, but I also have a, a seven-year-old and he can't miss school, okay? Um, so you can then try to say, well, you know, it's a great time of the year to come. So try to convince them um, that, you know, you're on their side. And what we do is we actually offer lower rates whenever it's slow. Are your dates flexible? No. Well, this is actually a great time to visit because there's so much going on in July. And there's the parade and the fireworks and the festival and the outdoor plays and the music concerts and, and all those things. All right. So let's move on. Next scenario here, we have some callers that give non-specific, they're not any specific reason for objecting to a particular rate. They simply offer a general objection. So whatever rate you quote, they say, wow, that rate's really high. And I know in your heart of hearts, some of you are thinking, yeah, I know, that's like two weeks pay. <laughs> but what we wanna say, okay, is we want to understand that some callers routinely ask 
Oh, my other slide is not advancing. There we go. So when callers give you a non-specific objection, we want to understand that some consumers routinely ask for that discount rate just to check to see how you will react. All right. They're fine with the rates you're quoting. They're just testing to make sure that they're getting the best deal. And it's a cat and mouse game. Okay. So what we want to do is say, um, you know, when they say, wow, that rate's really high. Well, actually, that's our prevailing rates. Would you like me to check other dates? Because sometimes when it's slower, we're able to offer lower rates. I can check promotions for you. Okay. But remember, they're probably just checking your reaction. There's some people that always ask for a discount. Okay. It doesn't mean they're cheap and poor. And if you've ever worked the front desk at a hotel, that guest that walks in and says, what's your lowest rate? You sure you don't have anything specials tonight? What about AAA? What about AARP? They pull out both cards and they say, can I use both? Um, they want that lowest rate. But the fact is, when you say, actually, that's our prevailing rate, they say, okay, I'll take it. Then they pull out the black American Express card, okay? Or was it a Chase Sapphire card for the people with the ultimate, you know, high 800 credit rating? Um, that only they get. So remember, she's smart. She's checking your reaction. All right. My father, God rest his soul, he's in his 90s now, somewhere up there. He gets smarter every year. And I'll tell you, that guy knew how to stretch his money. My father, and he wasn't wealthy, but, you know, he said, lived a good life, worked hard, saved well, owned his house. He was secure. But everywhere he went, he asked for a discount. Now, my father was at this sweet talking mode. You know, some guests are like, are you sure that's, you can't do anything else for me. I'm going to book somewhere else. Okay, I'll take it. Some of them cajole you and complain. My father, he would be the sweet talker. Oh, hello, how are you today? How's the weather there? Oh, that's great. Well, you sound really nice. Well, listen, I'm a senior citizen. My father would talk you into a discount because you would feel sorry for him. But that's not what we want to do. He was just checking your reaction. My dad would ask for a discount at a yard sale. <laughs> um, so anyways, make sure that we, um, you know, what you want to do when they're not specific, say, well, you know, I can check other dates. I can check other room categories. I can check other packages. Most of the resorts have the ocean view and then the other side. <laughs> I don't know if what you call that island view, garden view. Um, Resorts have mountain view and then resort view. Okay, it's a nice way to say parking lot. Um, but, you know, it's still a great room and we'll get into that in a minute. But would you like me to check other categories? Would you like me to check a package? We have some packages that include discounts on um, attractions or spa or dining or, or resort credits. Okay, so remember, they're just checking around. Now, stand your ground with a statement like this if they say no i want to come those dates but that rate is just really high and they keep pushing you and they keep on bantering you just say well i'm not sure if you had a chance to check around but our rates are usually very competitive with others in the area that are like us so you you can say with other luxury resorts or with other you know uh, full service vacation home rental companies whatever it may be so just stand your ground they're testing your reaction and a lot of them will say okay we'll take it but they just wanted to make sure that they got the best deal, all right? So uh, I'm gonna share with you one more idea then in this area. If you've not already done so, you wanna use what I call rate framing, okay? And what that means is to mention the top tier rates when you're selling anything other than the prevailing rate. So let me explain, because many of you might have different terminologies. Some of you have the high season rate, the mid-season rate and the off-season rate. Some of you call it the rack rate or bar rate. It doesn't mean you have to have a drink at the bar to get this rate, but the bar is the top rate and then you discount from there. Um, if you're selling anything other than that highest tier, you wanna mention the high tier, when, especially when people object. So let's go back to our scenario. The woman stayed for 175 off-season, now it's 375. And you could say, well, actually, just to let you know, the prevailing rate for this is actually 475. So, you know, when it's really slow, we're able to offer that 175 rate. But right now, it's 375, still a really good deal. And so that's what we call rate framing to mention the higher rate to position that lower rate. Now, 
Travel websites do this all the time. If you ever shop on Expedia, they always do slash pricing. They will tell you the price and then slash, and then they'll give you the actual price um, that you'd be paying. Now, um, that's also what Amazon does. If there's any Amazon Prime fans out there, I order a lot of things on Amazon Prime. But everything that you order, a, a lot of things that you order have slash pricing. It gives you the normal price and then, of course, the Amazon price, especially for their deals of the day and whatnot. Okay. So rate framing then uh, is a technique you can use as well. All right. Let's move on to our next scenario. Now we're going to talk about selling higher priced rooms and rates during peak demands when the discounts are closed. And what happens in this scenario, the accommodations that are left are the top tier. In other words, in other words here, if you're a beach resort, it's ocean view, beach front, beach front or suites. It's your uh, one bedroom suite or your five bedroom house. All that's left when you are almost sold out is gonna be one or two scenarios. It's gonna tend to be the highest priced accommodations in the inventory or the lowest price and we're going to look about we're going to look at that next because sometimes all you have left is the lowest price one but usually the stuff kind of in the middle the inventory in the middle gets sold out first all right so now she's searching online and she sees that what's left is that top rate accommodation the biggest suite the biggest homes now what we tend to say is right here our immediate reaction is to say check and availability uh, all we have left is oceanfront premier luxury deluxe suites. And I know you can't afford that because I can tell from your voice you're both cheap and poor. But I'm sorry, it's all that we have left. We don't want to sound like that, do we? When all you have left is all you have left, never say it's all you have left. Okay? That makes it sound like the leftovers. And do not say, oh, we check in availability. All we have left is our rate. So the, the first scenario here is rate. Check in availability. Oh, all we have left is our bar rate, $500 for that room. Okay. Or check in availability. Some people automatically say, check in availability. Oh, we don't have any discounts for those dates. The guy never asked you about discounts, and you're telling them there's no discount. Or the tone of your voice when you're about to quote that rate. Checking availability, oh, <laughs> it's 12,000 for the week, okay? So we don't want to sound like that, all right? And then again, we already touched on this. Likewise, the higher priced accommodations. Checking availability, oh, all we have left is the very best suite with the very best view, <laughs> and you are cheap and poor sound, all right? So what we don't want to say is all we have left, to kind of recap here, we don't want to say we, all we have left this makes what's left sound like the left overs, okay? And that's how she's going to react, all right? So here's a better way to say it. Check in availability for July 4th, and it's June 10th. Check in availability for July 4th. Oh, fortunately, what I still have left, okay? And then we're going to tell the story of that wonderful accommodation. If you've been with me for the other webinars, we always talk about the storytelling approach to narrate the picture. They're looking at the picture online, probably multiple pictures in your photo gallery. They've done a 360 degree tour perhaps, or seen a 3D floor plan, and they're asking you, what's it like? So we want to describe the accommodation before we get the price, all right? And if you do that, sometimes they're like, okay, whatever, I'll take it, all right? So you're certainly gonna do better with, fortunately, what we still have left, instead of all we have left is the best okay so keep that in mind whether it's regarding the last available accommodations being the best or the last accommodations being priced at the top tier and no discount rates okay similar scenarios now we have another situation here this guy is a last minute traveler he's on the go he's a busy millennial he's got on the run he planned at the last minute he's calling and this guy, he's got some money, okay? He's getting on a private jet here. It looks like, is that a private jet? Yeah, I think it's a private jet. And he's got a nice leather bag here. No Samsonite for him. 
uh, probably the, the, what is it, the iPhone 10, the $1,000 phone. He wants the best, okay? Now, he is calling at the last minute, and he requests the very best because he lives in Silicon Valley, and he works for Google, Facebook, uh, Uber, one of those phones, all right? So now what we're doing is we're checking availability. Well, guess what? All we have left. At the resort, instead of the oceanfront premier deluxe king, we have the garden view minimum or the <clears throat> limited view brick wall parking lot. Um, so again, we don't want to say all oh, you have left because that's going to make it sound like the leftovers. Check an availability, Mr. Happening Rich Guy. Oh, all we have left. Whatever you say next, you have just diminished whatever it is you have left. All right. So once again, when all you have left, is all you have left never say it's all you have left fortunately during that time i still have options open for you okay now we want to at this point make sure that we're going to do our best to um, let them know the positives but i want to bring up this point right here make sure to point out any of our glaring deficiencies okay and because we do not want this gentleman, we, and, and I think owners and managers and general managers and uh, the, the top leaders on the call today, I believe you will support this statement. We would rather lose the sale to him than to misrepresent that minimum category room as something really spectacular. Because what he will do is he will go on that iPhone 10 and blast us throughout social media and online um, viral guest reviews and marketing. So, and plus, it's not the right thing to do. However, if we let him know, fortunately, we, what well, we still have left, and we point out any glaring deficiency, so we manage the expectation, and then point out what's good about it. Now, if you do have me come out, or one of our other KTN trainers come out, and do training for your hotel, or for your vacation rental company, we always focus on the topic of how to sell that least, quote unquote, least desirable accommodation. Probably every hotel has one. All right. It's the if the resort is the one with no view or that overlooks the parking lot or that overlooks the brick wall. I have a client out in uh, California, Pacific Beach and uh, San Diego area, north of San Diego. All the almost all the rooms overlook Pacific Beach. Everybody's rollerblading. You see the waves crashing in the background. One room is actually overlooks the parking garage that's underneath the hotel. There's no windows to the outside. OK. So they want to let them know, just to let you know, <laughs> this room actually overlooks the parking lot. But here's what's good about it. Has the same, has the same amenities, very comfortable mattresses, blah, 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 and great location. And there's so much to do here at Pacific Beach. You probably won't be in the room that much anyway during the day when there's a view to be seen. And the good news is, sir, we still have it. Okay. So think about that. Managers, uh, it's a good way to challenge your team, frontline colleagues today, a good activity. If I was there doing training in person, I would make everybody right now think of that least desirable accommodation, point out the glaring deficiency, if there is one, and then talk about what's good, all right? So ocean view, island view, or ocean view, resort view. Fortunately, during this time, sir, we still have our resort view rooms. Now, the good thing is at night when, you know, the ocean is dark at night, but the good news is at night, you can overlook the resort activities and the beautiful lights and the palm trees flowing as they're illuminated um, by the high beams and you'll be able to see, you know, all the activity here uh, in the resort or look out your balcony and watch your kids play in the pool right below. All right. Okay. A couple more points then as we round the corner here. So another thing, your revenue manager, what she's doing this time of year, she's managing every day. She's working hard. She's looking at um, which rate tiers to open and close and also restrictions. So when we're talking Memorial Day, when we're talking July 4th, when we're talking Labor Day, when we're talking peak of July, you may have minimum stays. Vacation home rental companies, you might have a seven night minimum stay. You might have a five night minimum stay. Hotels, you might have a three-night minimum stay, um, particularly on Labor Day, Memorial Day, July 4th, maybe even a four-night stay. So another revenue tactic that she's using 
is to implement minimum stay restrictions. All right. Now, um, now the good news is that others in your area probably also have similar restrictions for peak dates. There is a school of thought for the per that says for the person that wants to come Memorial Day weekend, and they tell you they only want to come Friday and Saturday. There's a school of thought that says, "Oh, we're sold out." Okay rather than to say there's a minimum stay. Now, I'm not gonna be opposed to that, and uh, I'm gonna give you both sides of the argument. On the plus side, sometimes it's better just to say that there's, that you're sold out for their day pack. Okay, it's true, you are sold out for two nights stay. Um, however, uh, and, and the good thing there is you don't have to go through it, you know, uh, sometimes uncomfortable discussion. The other, challenge there though is that we might miss an opportunity to talk a guest into booking because probably everybody in the area also has a three-night minimum stay and once they realize that they there's a good chance they may decide just to stay three nights or to go ahead and pay for three nights even though they're only going to stay for two because they really want to go there for the parade or the event or the wine festival the music festival the hot air balloon festival whatever it may be all right so i'm not going to make that call managers you will have to make that call frontline reservation agents ask your manager how they want you to handle it all right now i think for city hotels i was in when i was training in boston it was a corporate hotel and they had business travelers you know they're probably not going to stay an extra weeknight with the minimum stay but for leisure guests, I think very often, here's how you might be able to convince them, all right? So stay restrictions often result in callers saying their plans do not allow for the extra night. So this guy is really stressed because he wants to come on Memorial Day or Labor Day, but here's what he's gonna tell you. Three night minimum, what? We can't stay over on a Sunday. My wife's a physician. She's gotta be back at the hospital on Monday morning first thing. And he's all distraught, okay? So what do we say to him? Sorry, <laughs> our revenue manager put in that policy. I know we're getting complaints all the time. I don't think that's gonna go over too well. So here's what we can say. So since we're gonna explain that like others, we're also restricting stays because there's so much to do, right? That we, since it's a holiday weekend, like the others in the area, we do have a minimum stay of three nights because there's so much to do. Most guests do wanna stay for the three nights, right? and then probe a little bit more. So there's no way you can stay over? Is, there, is it possible you can stay the extra night? And a lot of times they'll say, well, maybe, let me check, I'll get back with you. But some people say, no, she's, she's gotta be back at the hospital every Monday morning, okay? Well, then here's what you can say. Well, the good news is, one nice advantage is that on your last day, so if you stay Friday and Saturday, but you pay for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, on that last day, you don't have to worry about checkout time. You can stay as late as you want. Your wife can sleep in, the kids can go to the pool, okay? You can stay until the afternoon, maybe even into the early evening before you head back. Okay, now this will not solve all your problems in life, but we have to think of something to come back with, right? Um, and some people don't think about this. I know, when I vacation, I usually plan my departure date to be Monday because if we leave on Sunday, especially when my kids are little, now they're older now, um, they prefer to vacation on their own now, I guess, but we still do family vacations. But uh, still, even at that, I like to return on a Monday because if not, you got to be out of that house at 10 or 11 on a Sunday. If it's a resort, you got to be out by noon. That kind of kills Saturday night. Um, you know, especially if, you, if you're doing a vacation house or a cabin or a condo and you have a lot of stuff to pack up. Uh, but even at a resort, just my wife and I, you know, we are usually going to go out Saturday night. We want to sleep in. She likes to take her time getting ready and to pack up. So, um, you know, that's why we stay until uh, Monday. But um, for the guest that is being forced to pay for Sunday night that does not want to, you know, at least point out, hey, the good news is you can stay as late as you want on that last day. Or sometimes it might come up that they want to arrive early on Saturday and they want to stay Saturday and Sunday nights. Okay. 
And then you can say, well, we could actually arrange it to where you could pay for your third night would be Friday night. And then when you arrive Saturday morning, your suite, your room, your home, it'll be ready first thing. You won't have to wait for check-in time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So at least you get some advantage when that happens. All right. Well, um, in summary then, you know, it is that time of year when resorts, well, you know, again, if you're a ski resort, you have, you know, the, the winter rush and the summer rush. If you're in Miami, San Diego, Hawaii, Cancun, it's more a year-round market. Um, but it is either one of your two peak times in the resort business, or it is your most peak time if you're in a seasonal resort area, such as the upper Atlantic coast areas. This is when it's made or lost. So revenue managers know this, marketing people know this, you're gonna be selling the highest rates. Remember, the normal rate is that prevailing rate, the high rate, we discount when it's slow. We don't raise rates when it's busy. Remember, all of your accommodations are gonna be a great option, okay? That Motel 6 is Ritz-Carlton to somebody. That's one of, of my, my mottos. So the minimum room, okay, when you are selling that luxury house or that suite, and then you also sell that minimum room, remember, still close to the beach, still close to the mountain and the stream or the river or the lake, there's still a lot of good things about it. And you still have it. <laughs> so for that person that called at the last minute, fortunately, we still have, okay, instead of all we have left. And a lot of people today, there's more rate transparency than ever before. They know what the rate is before they dialed our number. But they're going to call you up and either do like my dad did and friendly sweet talk you into that discount, try to, or they're going to cajole you and berate you, you know, and, and then, but if you hold the line on either of those types of personalities, chances are pretty good. You just say, you know, our rates are very competitive. We would love to have you as our guest. Can we go ahead and secure this for you? Why don't you at least let me put it on hold for you till the end of the day uh, while you check around. And then if you have track pulse, you send them a follow-up email, you put them in your lead stream for two or three days from now, you reach back out and say, hey, I don't know if you had a chance to finalize plans, but we see you didn't book yet. We would love to put that into your system because I am in-house on-site reservations and we can take care of you right now. Okay, well, I hope you have enjoyed our webinar. Um, I really love the feedback that I get. If you have questions, comments, let us know. Uh, we do these every other month privately for the resorts and lodges clients. And then we do two additional ones that are public for, uh, for the entire industry. Um, and I hope to have brought value today. I wish you well for a successful summer season and we'll be back to you again in June. Paul, back to you. Thank you so much, Doug, and thanks to everyone who joined us today. If you do have any questions or are interested in learning more about our resortsandlodges.com and track solutions, please feel free to contact us at marketing at resortsandlodges.com. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you.